Rated T14. Does young people even need a voice in this community? What can the community expect from this show? Clearly I am our brother's keeper. We got to be responsible for each other. It's okay to be different. Uh -huh. Building stronger communities by helping the rest of our community really make it and achieve their dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go! Good morning, Ori and Georgetown counties, and welcome to Sound Off. Heard every week on your favorite radio station. Now, we are sponsored weekly by Carolina Teen Health. It is our goal at Sound Off to deal with issues that are relevant to our youth. And my special guest or special co-host on this morning is my very good friend, Mary Cookie Canty Goins. Woo! Now, Ms. Goins is the director of guidance at Myrtle Beach High School, uh, the rivalry school, Myrtle Beach High School in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Welcome, Ms. Goins. Thank you, Ms. Caulfield. And uh, what we're going to talk about this morning is we're going to talk about transition. Now, we are well aware that, you know, every student might not want to go to college, but the uh, focus or the emphasis for today's show will be uh, talking about the preparation, parents, and what the school needs to do in order for our young people to have a successful college career. And uh, on that note, team, would you like to introduce yourself, starting with you, my friend Dennis? Hi, my name is Dennis. I am an eighth grader at Rhythm Park. Brianna Evans. Michelle D. Berry. Tanisha Jones. Patrick Wilson. Okay, welcome. Welcome, team. Good morning. Everybody's looking like you had your Wheaties this morning. I would assume that you did. <laughs> Now, that's a good thing now. We need, we need some energy. But um, I, what, what we're going to talk about, I think we'll kick it off. Dennis is actually the youngest person in the studio audience. So what we're going to talk about is uh, the preparation in terms of how soon should parents uh, understand the importance of uh, their students being prepared for college. And so doing, before we got started, Dennis had a really, really, really good concern. And you can go ahead, Dennis, and ask him what you wanted to know at this time. What type of classes are needed to prepare me for college? I think it's totally essential, and, and I think it's great that Dennis is a part of the panel because many times students wait until they get in high school to start thinking about college or even begin preparing. But the best thing that you can do while you're in eighth grade, actually from the first day you set foot in an Horry County school or wherever it is, whether it's four-year um, pre-development or kindergarten, the best thing that you can do to prepare yourself for college is to take the most challenging and the most rigorous courses that are available. I think many times students, like I said earlier, they wait until they get to high school to kind of start wanting to take the, the college preparatory or the honors classes. That really and truly needs to begin um, as early as possible. I know there are some students who are a part of our, um, in the state of South Carolina, is a gifted and talented um, program. That is based on um, assessments and scores, but when parents are truly earnest about their students um, being challenged as much as possible academically, there is a manner in which parents can get their students enrolled in the most rigorous courses. So the test scores don't mean everything. Right. Are they important? Absolutely, but they don't mean everything. But parents have a responsibility to be sure that their children are challenged. If your student is making A's and B's in a standard course, you might want to consider bumping them up to the next level. And because they make a B or a C in a um, higher level course, it's not a bad thing. We know that they're having to um, study harder, but they're also gaining more. So the best thing, Dennis, that you can do is to take the hardest classes that are available to you as an eighth grader. And when you get to high school, just because they get harder, don't stop. Continue taking the challenging courses. Okay, and, and I think that's a very realistic answer because uh, when you go to college and you know Ms. Goins, we could definitely attest to the fact that college was not easy. And so I think um, today what we're going to try to do is empower our parents to understand when we have meetings, when we have conferences, you know, we need parents to become proactive. If we're going to do, you know, this thing we call college, it's definitely the time. And that's why we felt it was necessary here at Sound Off to deal with this topic. And that brings me to uh, Patrick. Patrick is actually blew my mind. Patrick, you are a senior at University of South Carolina. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Wow. 
That's unbelievable. But that is also wonderful. I commend you. But uh, thinking back over your high school days, Patrick, while you were that wonderful student at Conway High School, um, going from high school to Carolina, looking back now, what, what, what do you think was the toughest thing for you in terms of adjusting to being a freshman at, uh, a freshman at University of South Carolina? If anything, I would say the transition from memorization skills that you mainly use in high school and actual study skills that you need to gain in a college setting in order to maintain and in order to make it through your four years. Because in high school, I never really had to study okay. because when I was in class, I knew it. But now it's like when you get to college, you're trying to figure out what do I need to do? What can I do more to make sure that my grades are where they need to be and where I want them to be? Okay, and I know Ms. Goins, uh, you know, we talked about beforehand, you know, the fact that a lot of students probably will s struggle in that area. You know, but from the guidance perspective, how would you address that? Again, it goes back to what I share with Dennis, and I think what we're going to find today is that, you know, it, it, it's a continuation of everything that you start. The higher the level of the course or the more rigor that students um, are introduced to, they have better study habits okay. because it's not just a matter of looking at a list and remembering how to spell words. It takes on, you got to know definitions and you have to understand application and then how do we make it relevant? I think that is a, a buzzword that has been around mm -hmm. for the past co couple of years. It, it's all right to learn math, but students need to understand, okay, how does this application, you know, how does this right. apply, and when am I ever going to use it? But the higher the level of the course, um, you know, some courses are, are, there's just the college prep level. Right. Um, then you have your honors and you have your AP. Students need to be encouraged to take the most rigorous courses there are. Now, does that mean that a student has to take every honors or every AP um, course that is offered? No, because everybody has gifts. Everybody has strengths. Mm -hmm. There are students who are math science. They need to take every honors AP math science course there is. If language arts is not your greater strength, then you take the highest level of that particular area that is open to you. But again, rigor, rigor, rigor. Ultimately, it prepares you for every aspect with its, um, tr of transition, whether it's study skills, actually um, knowing the material and being able to um, apply. Okay. Rigor, rigor, rigor. You gotta take the toughest courses that are available, but knowing that you're capable of succeeding and doing well in those courses. Okay, all right. And Michelle, you had you wanted to ask something. Um, I'm a rising senior at Conway High School. What do I need to be taking, and what do I need to be doing in order to be prepared for college? Okay, um, I want to address that twofold. The first thing is that. Make sure that whenever your academic conferences are being held, that a parent or a designee, some adult, is there with you. Not that you are not smart enough and not capable of asking questions and handling the information that is given to you, but parents' presence makes so much difference. Are we going to still provide for you and, and, and take care of you and do the things that we need to do to get you ready for the next level? I absolutely believe that every counselor in Horry County has that as their goal. But it just makes it so much more special and right. so much more important when you have that designated adult there. But again, what do you need to do? In order to be prepared for next year this time, you got to take the highest level of courses. You've got to make sure that your attendance is up to par. You've got to make sure that you've already begun some aspect of community service. You've got to be sure that your SATs and ACTs are in order. You shouldn't enter senior year having taken an SAT or an ACT for the first time. We begin those things junior year, spring of junior year. Some students take them earlier, but College Board and ACT suggest that students begin those spring of junior year. Now. Not everybody's going to do SAT. Right. Not everybody's going to do SAT. Mm -hmm. It depends on the assessment that is right for the student. Thus, it is so important that you and the parent or the designated adult meet with that counselor. We work for you. 
w without you, we have no purpose. So you've got to make sure that, again, taking the highest level of courses, getting yourself involved in your school and your community, and making sure that, that your parent or designee doesn't have to be a parent. And also the one right. thing I want to point out is not all parenting or family mm -hmm. is by.